Hi, my name is Niat and I'm a developer at Urban Games. Today I have the great pleasure to show you an exclusive gameplay preview of the Transport Fever 2 console edition. Transport Fever 2 is a tycoon game where the player connects towns and industries to let the world grow and to earn money. Trains, ships, planes and different types of road vehicles are available to build up a transport company. The game starts in the 1850s and the player experiences the change of time until today. The game features three different vehicle sets from Europe, America and Asia, as well as three climate zones, temperate, dry and tropical. For this video I have prepared a map with pre-built infrastructure and lines to give you a better overview of the game. Welcome to our fictional tropical island featuring Asian vehicles in the 1970s. The main goal of Transport Fever is to build up a profitable transport company. You earn money by transporting people and cargo. Towns play a central role in the game. The more they grow, the more money you can make. People either commute between home and work or like to go shopping by walking, using their cars or with public transportation. Via the radial selector, the layer menu can be accessed to visualize the land uses. People live in the green buildings, go to work in the yellow industrial buildings and go for shopping to the blue commercial buildings. Cargo, on the other hand, is transported along the production chains to be finally delivered to buildings within towns. There is another layer to identify the exact delivery locations. Now, let's inspect a town to understand the requirements and mechanics. For that, I open the town window of Nagoya, which explains in detail how town growth works. Here, in the window, we can see all its requirements, the current level of fulfillment and the impact on town growth. The first requirement is the reachability of workplaces and shopping facilities via public transport. As seen here, the inhabitants of Nagoya can already reach two destinations, thanks to the ship line going to the second island and the train line connecting one of the neighboring towns. However, not all people in town can reach the train station, as stations have a limited catchment area, shown here with the white highlighted buildings. People outside of this area are not able to walk to the station and can't use the connections offered there. Therefore, to further increase the town's reachability number, we need to extend the reach of the station. We should introduce a bus line. Starting here, I will connect all three land use districts to the station. This will allow all town inhabitants and also people from neighboring cities who are arriving at that station to reach work and shopping places in Nagoya by bus. Having built the stations, it's just a few button presses to add a new line connecting them. Now we need a depot, where we can buy buses and assign them to the line. The buses will spread out automatically and, over time, more and more passengers will start to use the line. As we can see, in the top row of the city window, the number of destinations has already increased significantly, as the inhabitants of Nagoya have now more places to go shopping and to work. This will help grow the city. We can still increase this value by expanding the public transport even further. As Kobe already has a bus service near the train station, another good option is to improve the capacity of the train line from Nagoya to Kobe. This can be done by editing the existing trains. For example, we can replace the wagons with ones that have more seats and add more wagons to the train. We can also increase the frequency of the line by adding more trains. An elegant way is to just clone an existing train. Besides the public transport, private transport destinations also have an impact on town growth. If I take a look at the destination layer, I can find out where people are traveling by public or private transport. Players can use this information to enhance the reachability of cities for people using their cars. Building a highway will enhance the private transport value, but might also compete with public transport. Next, we will have a look at the demand for cargo. Each city demands at least two different types of cargo. One for the commercial district and one for the industrial district, as we can see here in the cargo layer. 
Nagoya's commercial district demands food, which is one of the more simple cargo chains that can be built in the game. Luckily, there is a food factory not far away from the city. It is currently not producing anything, because it lacks the required resources. So the first step is to connect a nearby farm and deliver grain to the factory. Let's place a truck station next to the farm and connect it to a cargo station next to the food factory. The intuitive street building tool allows to select different types of roads to be built simply by dragging segments. Similar to a public bus route, we can set up a line between the stations and add a couple of trucks that deliver the grain to the factory. The farm is now putting its grain onto the truck station, where the trucks can pick it up. This is also shown in the info window of the farm, where the shipment value is now going up. When the trucks drop off the grain at the food factory, the grain counts as transported, and the player earns some money. At the same time, the factory starts producing food. Now, the food factory has nowhere to ship its goods, so let's deliver it to Nagoya. We can simply build another station next to the existing truck terminal, as it makes a connection between the station and the factory. Like streets, train tracks can be built by dragging segments from a start to an end point. The train station in Nagoya is located in the commercial district, so we can directly drop off the cargo at the station, and it will be delivered to all the buildings within its catchment area. Let's wait for the train to deliver its first load of cargo. As we can see in the town window, as soon as the food is unloaded at the train station, it starts to cover the demand of the town. Over time, this will affect the city's growth positively. When the value for production, shipping and transport of an industry is above a certain threshold, the industry will start to grow to the next level, allowing it to produce more cargo. On the other hand, industries which are not served by the player may close and disappear over time. For longer distances or across large lakes or the ocean, planes or ships might be a good solution to connect industries and towns. While our inhabitants are happy to have public and private transport services, as well as supply with cargo, there are also things that hinder city growth. Let's briefly touch on them as well. With growing cities and more and more people using our services, stations may begin to overcrowd. Here, in Kobe, we can see that several stops of our bus line are already overcrowded and people will start to avoid this line as a consequence. A good measure is to add more or newer buses with more capacity to the line. If a train or bus terminal is running out of space, we can also extend the length of platforms or add side buildings to increase their capacity. In fast-growing cities, there is a tendency to develop heavy traffic on roads. To counter this, we can upgrade streets to a wider version. Crowded junctions may also be upgraded with traffic lights or a roundabout can be added to ease the flow of traffic. I hope you enjoyed this brief look into the gameplay of Transport Fever 2 Console Edition. Of course, there is much more we did not have time to cover in this video. There is a campaign mode where you can play through 18 missions inspired by real-world transportation events from 1950 until today. The game also offers a map editor as well as a random map generator where you can create infinitely many maps yourself. A sandbox mode is available too, where you can customize almost every aspect of the game. This will offer virtually limitless possibilities to create your own challenges and provide you with many hours of fun. We are looking very much forward to finally releasing the game on consoles. All the best and friendly greetings from the whole team at Urban Games. Bye bye!